whatever. So, apparently, as it said in the thing, that the variety store here was rubbed as well. So, uh, I think we have exhausted our possibilities over here. Since nobody else is around, and Joe Sargent is particularly unhelpful. Mackie said he was going to be at the uh, Marsh Refinery, so let's go see if he's over there. Go through this tunnel, we'll bump into that one lady. And yeah, as you can see, the thing's a bit more clear. The lights up. Nope, she's not around. Oh no, there she is. Tempest motor oils. A lot of brands of motor oils. Just say anything else to me? Can you at least tell me if you knew the Burnham lad? He worked in the First National. Look here, Mr. Walters. I can't answer your questions, and your harassment is putting us both in danger. Please, leave me alone. In danger? From whom? The Order. Now go! The Order? Ropes mentioned the Order as well. She isn't going to tell me anything useful right now. Oh God, some poor soul's hung herself. Stop looking now. This is actually a different phone. A storage cellar for one of the stores. Okay. Here's Mackie. Here he is. Come on, Mackie. Hello, Mackie. Jack! Swell to see you again. Any leads on the Burnham case? Nope. Did you know the lad at all? Just pleasantries. Seemed a nice enough fella, if a little rough around the edges. Strange business, though. I'd never have fingered him as a crook. The First National was a well-run store, a rare thing here in Innsmouth. Okay, Mackie. Thanks. Goodbye, Jack. Be careful what you're doing. Very careful. Insmith's a dangerous place. Not everyone who visits here ends up leaving by the old bus route. This Mackie character knows plenty, but I don't think grilling him for scraps of information is going to crack this case. What do you know about the break-in at the variety store? Only what was in the press. You should speak to Thomas Waite. He owns the joint. Where's his place? I think the Waite's house is over on Dock Street. Near the back of the pool house. Thanks. Though I warn you, Insmith's driven old weights a bit crazy. He doesn't talk a lot of sense. That's my sort of fella. He sounds just perfect. What's this Jacob Marsh like? Ah, uh, he didn't show up for our appointment. But then again, the Marshes never do. Seems like we're both having some lousy luck. I've only met Jacob the once. He's not the prettiest picture, and a real slimy character. Mackie. Hello, Jack. What's the government's interest in the Marsh Refinery, anyway? It's just domestic affairs. You ask a lot of questions, Jack. I'm a detective. What the hell do you expect? What you're after comes under official secrets, if you know what I mean. But I can tell you that our government has become increasingly suspicious of Insmith and the Marsh family. I've heard of the Marshes. Rumors of that family are rife, even on the streets of Arkham. None of what's said is pleasant. That I can believe. The Marshes have been ruling this port for nearly a century, ever since that plague swept these streets in the 40s. A plague? Is that why the place is so deserted? Mass has died, so that would figure. There's gossip that old Captain Obed Marsh brought the disease onto this port from foreign trade. Deliberately. Oh my god. Is that why so many of the townsfolk are suffering from that hideous affliction? Perhaps. Those from out of town call it the Insmith look. So, that would explain why the newspaper shut down in 1846. Although, 
that seemed to indicate something far more suspicious was going on than just a mere disease. Now, the infamous look are why everybody looks creepy in the town except for Mackie and, well, that person over there, but we don't know why she doesn't look that way. Where did you say Waite's house was again? I think it's over on Dock Street, near the back of the poorhouse. Okay. So we can get out of Mackie. Apparently the government is really cracking down on the marshes. She isn't going to tell me anything useful right now. Okay, so we exhausted our possibilities to go this way as well. I'm looking for Brian Burnham. Can't help you. Jerk. Do you know the Burnham lad? He worked in the First National. Can't rightly see as I know him. At least he was more polite. It won't open. This is a... seeing that later. So let's go talk to Zadok. See if he's got anything else to say. Windows. Sometimes a lot of different stuff in them and different things happen. So let's give him uh his Oh I'm not close enough. Why, you're uncommonly kind, young feller. Here be a little something in gratitude that may help you in your search. He gives key. Ah, now you be calling me crazy. Like them that star rumoring an anchorum in Lipswitch. But old Zadok's seen all manner of wicked things since before you was born. Mm. Ah. Old Captain Mobit where it all began. Telling desperate folks they'd order get better gods. Them's that would answer their prayers. Didn't the Christian folk of Innsmouth object to such blasphemy? Aye, they did. It were around 46 that many folks in town were done with Obed and his ways. And all that wild preaching and too many missing, you see. Uh, a party of good folk followed Captain Obed's crowd out to the reef. Shots were fired. Next day, Obed and thirty of his fathers were in jail. And for weeks all were quiet. Till that artful night of forty-six. Them's out outside reckon out it being a riot. But I'd seen them. Swarms of them. Look, old man. I don't have time to listen to these fishing tales. Oh, psst. Was a massacre. The jail thrown open, mounds of the dead and the dying, <gasps> shooting and screaming and shouting all across the town square. Come morning, the mess was cleaned up. Old Obed and his family takes charge, they did. Folks were told to keep shy of strangers if we were known what was good for us. Sadok. Who did all this? Who did all? Said the old captain was now deeper in debt to his even gods. They were hankering for more than just sacrificing. Obed told folks they had to take the oaths of Dagon. What the hell are these oaths? You just asked old Wes about oaths of Dagon. Aye, he take the third oath. Just head over to his hole in the dark street. Then you'll see, for definite. He's given me a key to the town poorhouse. It could come in handy. So, Zadok Allen here is actually a, ref uh, a direct character from the story. 
as is uh, Joe Sargent. The rest of the characters we've met so far. Ha <laughs> ha! night, boys, we must no doubt fight. it's well stocked with bootleg rum. Us, yeah, My kind of joint. Shall never scare them. Aside from Brian Burnham, who we haven't met but have referenced, are um, people in the story. The rest of them are all characters made of Where did Captain Obed Marsh learn of these heathen matters? In war and foreign parts, the old fool I lent to ways of making gains, doing heathen things. He found a tribe of Canuckies in the South Seas led by a savage. Chief went by a name of Wallachia. And his tribe never went without food. For they had all the fish they could catch. Old Obed learned from his Wallachia that these things on this earth as most folks never heard about. Seems these Canuckies was worshipped in undersea gods with heaps of human sacrifices and other heathen things. But they was getting all kinds of favors in return. Plenty of fishing and even gold now and then. Human sacrifices? Maybe you've had just a bit too much. <clears throat> I don't blame you for not believing it, young fella. But just answer me this. Why did Captain Obed roll out to the reef of Satan and chant a lot of rites and incantations in the dead of night so loud you could hear them all over apart? He cast something in the water that eve. Out the other side of Devil's Reef. Some kind of thingamajig crafted out of lead. It was given to him by a while again. So, what happened? Well, not long after the smoke started coming out of the chimneys at the old gold refinery, the Marsh family and those that had joined with Obed in his ways started prospering in the esoteric order of Dagon came into being with his Ethan Sermon uh, that shit they do what kinds of ceremonies mm. yeah. get out of here lad don't wait for nothing they'll know now um. I think he's had his fill for the night. That exchange there was much more frantic in the story. Zadok! Zadok! Curse you, lad, for staring at me with them eyes. The old Captain Manel, and he's staying there. He can get me. Uh, he can't. No, no, he can't get me. I had nothing done. I ain't done nothing or told nobody nothing. Are you okay, old timer? Huh? <laughs> Leave me be. That uh, last part doesn't really make sense in the context of the story. Oh, look, it's her. But uh, it's quite important. Uh, it doesn't make sense in the context of this story, but in the original story, it does. So, Mr. Walters, I must speak with you. It's Jack. And just hold on there a minute, sweetheart. Are you going to even tell me your name? My name's Rebecca Lawrence, and unless you want to join Innsmouth's long list of missing, I'd urge you to follow me. Missing, huh? Like Burnham? Of that, I'm not sure. You'd be better off asking the Billingham's daughter, Ruth. She was dating Brian. What? Who's Ruth? Quickly. We don't have much time. You've got to follow me. So that's the girl it was talking about. Jack, Innsmouth is a strange place. There are things that have no business being here. Foul, reeking things. Strange? Trust me, I'm good with strange. That remains to be seen, but I can help you. My father discovered this strange sign while studying an old manuscript. It seems to ward off the more unusual elements in Innsmouth. Whenever you find one, you can use it to find a moment of sanctuary. Now, I must leave before we're seen together. 
I've seen that eye-like symbol somewhere before, but never surrounded by a star. This is an Elder Sign. It acts as a save point. But it also prevents the supernatural enemies of the game from coming after you, which is most of them. I don't only think there's a few that are unaffected by it. Uh, we were both, we were given indications from, I guess, both people we just talked to, Mackie and Zadok Allen, that we need to talk to, uh, wait, who they call old, but he doesn't actually seem that old when we talk to him, you'll see. Don't know if Mackie has any more insights for us. Where did you say Wait's house was again? I think it's over on Dock Street, near the back of the poor house. Jack, we can't be seen talking together. What is it? Why do you stay in Innsmouth, Rebecca? My grandfather, John Lawrence, was editor of the Innsmouth Courier. He was murdered in the slaughter of 46. He had always despised the marshes and their blasphemous doings, and it was he who led the party out to the reef that night. They arrested Captain Marsh and his order, and tossed them in the old jailhouse. A few weeks later, my grandfather was dead. My father saw him die. Him and many others burned alive in the courier's basement. All the more grounds to leave. To leave would be to fail my own legacy. I have a duty to protect the good in Innsmouth. At least what little good remains. No, it's 1922. There were bodies in the basement that still had... She knows plenty, but I need to have a look around myself if I'm gonna crack this case. You remember. That was in 46, which does uh, kind of confirm the story that Zadok told us, even though, I mean, we, we can't get that story from her until we talk to him, obviously. But uh, the outside world seems to think it's a plague, which is not the truth. Um, so if it happened weeks after this, that should be quite a long time, uh, long enough for the bodies to decompose more. But I mean, most of them are skeletons, but... If you can see, yeah. Oh, and she says that uh, her grandfather was the Innsmouth Courier, John Lawrence. So you can get that link up when you first get her name. Rebecca, maybe you know. What happened at the variety store? Ah, uh, Tom Waits' place. The gossip on the streets is that the store safe holds a great treasure. Since the Order got wind of the rumors, they've been desperate to get their filthy hands on it. But it seems they can't get close. Odd. Do you suppose Burnham knew about it? Maybe he pocketed it before breezing out of town. I don't know, Jack. He'd only been in town a few months, and we can't be certain he even managed to leave. Ruth Billingham must be involved in all of this somehow. She was desperate for a way out of Innsmouth. What do you know about her? Only that she and Brian were close, much to the Order's disapproval. You should speak to Tom Waits. Find out for certain if the treasure's gone. Where can I find him? He lives on 803 Dock Street, just by the back of the old town poorhouse. Well, that's more specific, but it's still not very helpful. But now we've got an indication for three people to go talk to. Where did you say I could find Waits again? He lives on 803 Dock Street, by the back of the poorhouse. Now, if you'll notice, Mackie, her, and even Zadok do not have that characteristic Innsmouth look that they talk about. Uh, Mackie seems to indicate that it was caused by some sort of plague, but uh, it seems... Other people indicate that that plague never really happened. It was a massacre. It could be involved with those things that Zadak and Alan were talking about. 
There are other people who look relatively normal, like this guy doesn't look too strange, but he does really have some kind of weirdness about him. Um, and it's odd that the the um, Order of Dagon is trying to get something that that Wait has. It says that Wait took the Third Oath of Dagon, whatever that means. Okay, so let's go talk to some other people. Fog's thick tonight. Damn enough to put out a fellow's smokes. You have anything else to talk about? I'm looking for a young lad called Brian Burnham. He worked in the First National. I'm a friend of the family. I ain't heard of the Burnham lad. Right. So he's got a particularly bad case of the Innsmouth look. What the heck? Come on, apparently I was stuck in a little rut there. This game's pretty buggy. Let's go see if Ropes has anything to talk about. He isn't gonna tell me anything useful. Apparently not. Okay. Uh, what about down here? Well, I checked that before. Couldn't do anything down there either. So, we have uh, the poorhouse key. Key to the town's poorhouse, which is over here, as we saw before. It's unlocked. So we just go in. Yep, there you go. And that will keep track of our sanity stuff. So this is... If I see you without fire... I'll report your order. I'll not say nothing. Oh, really? Are you gonna say anything? Where is everybody? It's very quiet. I can't be seen talking to you. I'm looking for Brian Burnham. Please stop bothering me, stranger. She doesn't look too weird either. It won't open. Hmm. What's down here? Than we can see anyway. I have a strange feeling I'm being watched. See that thing up there? Hey, buddy. You watching me? Hmm. That's a rather odd looking fellow. There's another odd looking fellow. Notice how the hands bandaged. Do you need any help? Disease is rampant in this town. It won't budge. I'd say so. He's wearing the same kind of robe that the dude up there is. He's definitely looking at me. It won't open. So here's the poorhouse. Well, I don't know why there are two doors to the poorhouse, and the only way you can get to this street is from the poorhouse. No, actually, I think you can get here. Otherwise, I'm not sure. Where is everybody? It's very quiet. I reckon you might have scared them off of that ugly face of yours. <laughs> very funny, dude. Do you know the Burnham lad? He worked in the First National. Can't rightly says I know him. Where is everybody? It's very quiet. It's getting late, outsider. Folks as know what's good for them are safely bolted in their homes by now. I'm looking for Brian Burnham. Can't rightly says I know him. It's the entrance to the him. town poorhouse. That's the exact same line about being bolted in their homes that ropes fed us earlier. Can I not close the door? Okay. Just good habits. So this is the poorhouse proper. It won't open. It's a door over here we can't open. Got here. Ooh. Somebody's looking directly in that window. Since old Lady Warren's passed away, Whoa. the food is rotten. Who was that? But we'll die soon enough. So, Old Lady Warns... Huh. Isn't this place in memory of her? You can see that guy over there. What are you looking at there, old-timer? Nothing. I'm just looking. 
What you doing in old Warren's house, young feller? This hole is for the broke and the dying. I'm trying to find Dock Street. It's out back of the house. Everything in Innsmouth is rotten and dying. Windows boarded up, and all sorts of curious barking and crawling around black cellars and attics. How would you like to be living in a town like this, fella? I've been to more welcoming places. I don't think he's been outdoors for years. He isn't gonna know anything. This guy has some lines that Zadok Allen had in the original story. That Zadok Allen tells some wild tales. Hey, Zadok's a troublemaker, I tell you. If he weren't such a drunken old fool, the order have sorted him out before now. Innsmouth must have an intriguing past. Innsmouth's a historic town, stranger. Plenty of history here. Do you know anything about the robberies of the two stores in town? No. Can't help you there, fella. I can only tell you what I seen from this here window, and that ain't much of nothing. Do you know anything about the robberies of the two okay. stores in town? No. Can't help you there, fella. I can only tell you what I seen from this here window, and that ain't much of nothing. This almshouse is home to the old and the destitute. Lots of bugs. Lots of sheet metal. What? These beds reek of sweat and urine. Ooh, medical box. Still haven't reached our cap for these yet. If you're looking specifically for uh, antidotes, or if you're using them, you should use them pretty often. Her sleep is restless and erratic. Hmm. I'm not gonna wake her. Some cucarachas on the floor. All right. Don't know why we have to go up to get out of the house, but whatever. The old woman's dead. She must have kicked it a week back, or more. Okay, I'm getting a little bit crazy here. It won't budge. Now he says that he's He's good with, uh, with Strange, but he's not really, he, uh, he goes crazy. So, um, the only way down is through here. And here's an indication of the, his fear of heights. You get a little bit of a vertigo effect, and it does affect your sanity rating. You kind of have to drop down here. So beware of that. And climbing around stuff. I'm looking for Brian Burnham. I ain't never had an old Burnham. So this is the first woman we've seen, I think, that has the affliction, as it were. Uh, this is the way back out. Oh. Jesus. Those people are gonna rip their heart. This is the direction back to uh, the town square. That's why they were cordoning off this tunnel. Jesus, those people have been ripped apart. Now, you're not supposed to go down there and look at that if you wanted to not lose too much sanity because, uh, yeah, that's a big hit right there. Can't get past here. They just kind of put, well, highly visible plot walls in your way. So this is 803. I don't know if any of the other ones have addresses on them. I'm just trying to tell you exactly where this place is. Hello there, little lady. Hi, sir. Are your parents at home? Daddy's at work and Mommy's upstairs in the attic. She's been bad. I see. So, what's your name, little lady? Ramona. Well, Ramona, could you get your mommy for me? Nope. Mommy bites. Daddy says we've got to keep her up there for her own good. Excuse me? When I go near the door, she growls. I don't love mommy like I love my daddy. You don't say. Ramona, I really need to speak to your daddy. Do you know when he'll be home? Soon, I think. You can wait inside if you like. Daddy won't mind. I'm drawing pictures with my crayons. That would be great. Thanks. 
I should check the place over while I've got the chance. So apparently her mummy is crazy and bites people. And she's locked in the attic. And you might recognize the song she's humming there. It's the same song as the, uh, was playing on the, the record player at the beginning.